Hi friends. Well, as promised in last week's video, I'm going to do my water tests to see what kind of uh, minerals and contaminants are in the water here at Lake Chapala and in all of the city water of Lake Chapala and how we get it. Um, we get it in garrafons, that's bottled water. We get filtered water. We have water that sits in the Tanaco for a while. I have a well, we're gonna test the well water. We're gonna test the water coming out of the kitchen sink. And a couple of bonus waters that I didn't realize I would be able to test. My uh, neighbor has a salt water pool. I have a regular water chlorinated pool. And she also has a filtered water system with the UV light. So we're gonna test all of those waters, but right now I'm on my way down to the lake to get some lake water. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. Hello, I'm going down to get some water from the lake. Are you going to be my lovely assistant today? Do I have to drink the water? No, you don't have to drink the water. You just have to write down numbers as I'm reading them off. Oh, okay. Okay, I'll be back in a minute. Uh, the mountains are getting green. Check this out. Hello, how are you? <laughs> Monday? Ah! Dosa Media. Where were we? Oh, uh, I have these test tubes I'm collecting the water in. Well, as long as we're here, maybe we should say hello to the birds. Uh, that was a great egret. And all of these guys sitting in the tree are cormor cormorants, except for one. There's a night heron. The night heron is the one that's still left there. They're pretty brave. Oh, there he goes. They go fishing, fish, come back here, sit in this tree and let their feathers dry out. Dang, I am gonna have to get my feet wet today. Well, it's all for the sake of science, right? Lirio, water hyacinth. Ay, ay, ay. Uh, go out just a little bit farther. Okay. There's the test tube. And there's the lake water. So the way this is going to work is that my lovely assistant is going to write down numbers. And the numbers come from me sticking these litmus paper strips into the water. And then we compare the color to this chart here. And each one of those different colors has a different part per million on it. And then there's another sheet where we compare the Environmental Protection Agency standards for how many parts per million are acceptable in our water. So as I read this, and the numbers are small, my lovely assistant is going to write down the numbers. You got it? I got it. No drinking the water. No drinking the water. Well, okay. we finished recording all of our numbers, the parts per million of different things in the water here on the north shore of Lake Chapala. And I've made a handwritten spreadsheet of all of them, which I'll talk about in a minute. But I'll post a good picture of that uh, towards the end of the video so that you can pause the video and look at those numbers for yourself if you'd like to do that. 
Before I talk about the numbers, I'd like to talk about the reason we're talking about the water quality on the north shore of Lake Chapala, Jalisco, Mexico, why we're talking about it. There's a lot of controversy about the water quality in the lake uh, itself. Uh, I did a video uh, uh, three years ago, maybe, about the water quality of the lake itself, and it was a very comprehensive study, not by me, but other people that I referred to, uh, water quality experts who did tests all around the lake. And uh, I think the title of that video was, is Lake Chapala Killing Children? Uh, and specifically, we're talking about mercury in the lake. Um, there is a controversy about that. And if you want to know more details about that, I'll put a link at the end of the video. You know, at the outro, we call it on YouTube world, uh, where it shows you different videos you can go and watch next. I'll put it there if you're interested in the water quality of the lake itself. Now, I want to tell you that the tests that I did are about drinking water, and I'm going to refer the results, uh, com compare the results, to the Environmental Protection Agency standards in the United States, which I have a list of for each of the 16 things that I tested for. I also want to explain that um, the test is subjective. Uh, I take that litmus paper strip after soaking it in the water sample, and then I have to compare it to the different colors, and each of those colors has a different parts per million indication. And the reason it's subjective is because these 70-year-old eyes are the ones that have to decide, is it purple or is it blue? Is it this light color or is it a darker shade? So there is some subjectiveness to it. But for those um, uh, results that came out to be out of range or significantly different than I expected, I did the tests twice on some of them in order to convince myself, quite frankly, that I was doing the test uh, in a legitimate way. And even though it is subjective, I'm confident that the results I have given you to the ability of this test to determine it are quite accurate. Another thing that I want to say up front is that this is a test for drinking water. It's not a test for pathogens. Uh, amoebas or bacteria or, what is it, coliform? Is that the word? Those things in the water that can be uh, adverse to your health in a rather fast way uh, are not what this test is designed for. This is a test is designed for uh, drinking water uh, contaminants with regard to, you know, uh, different chemicals, and I'll list all 16 of them that we tested for. Um, therefore, the things that might affect your uh, health over the course of a long term ingesting that water. It's not for things, and I didn't test for things, that can hurt you real quick, like amoebas and bacteria. That takes... Uh, a week or so in a petri dish, and that's not a test I did. So if I say, yeah, the water coming out of my faucet looks pretty good, that doesn't mean you ought to be drinking it in Mexico. Well, let's talk about why I'm doing the tests. To the controversies and the questions about the water quality on the north shore of Lake, Ch Lake Chapala, not just the lake itself, but um, the quality of the city water. Uh, mercury is mercury killing children. That was one of the things, and you can go back and see my old video about that. But another one is that the lake is full of pesticides and fertilizer. There's a lot of agricultural activity around the lake, and especially on the south side of the lake. They grow berries and tomatoes and artichokes and lots of things, and of course they fertilize their crops. And the uh, controversy is whether or not those fertilizers in the runoff to the lake or even the groundwater from where we get our city water is contaminated by fertilizers. 
And there are two indications of that called nitrite and nitrate. And I will tell you whether or not I found them when we get to the numbers. By the way, for those of you who say, give me the numbers, give me the numbers, just give me the numbers. I don't want to hear all this other stuff. Derek, quit talking. You talk too slow. Just give me the numbers. Please go watch somebody else's video. Speaking of the numbers, it's been my goal for uh, several months to reach 40,000 subscribers, and it happened yesterday, and I want to thank each and every one of you new subscribers and welcome you to my channel. I hope that I can deserve your attention. And for the other 39,900, thanks for coming back occasionally. <laughs> I do appreciate you. Um, I make my videos for my own entertainment, but I hope that they are uh, not only entertaining for you occasionally, but sometimes, even if it's rare, um, educational. Well, uh, why else are we talking about the water quality of Lake Chapala? There, um, uh, there's this old story about the water leery. You saw me walking through the leery with that green stuff at the edge of the lake, and it used to be a lot worse. It, um, about 10 years ago, it was so bad that some days you would get up and look across the lake, and it was just a green carpet for eight miles straight across. You couldn't see any water. Well, there were a whole bunch of theories about how they're going to get rid of it, or how, and they tried some of them. They tried grinding it up and hauling it out of the lake. They tried, and, and they found out that the grinding up process just uh, exacerbated the problem because it could increase in volume, um, double in volume in five days if they ground it up. Anyway, um, one of the old stories was that they put... Um, manatees in the lake to eat it. And the story is that the locals didn't understand what they were. They thought they were evil creatures and killed them. Um, I, I, I refer to that as a myth, and I, I do not know if it's false, but I don't think it's true. Um, manatees. Uh, there's another um, thing about that lirio in the lake, and it's that they they sprayed it with uh, glyphosate. That's the brand name for that is Roundup. It's weed killer. And there are people who still believe that even after 10 years, it's still in the lake and it evaporates and that you should be wary of breathing the breeze that comes off of the lake. Well, I'm going to put that in the same category as the manatees were evil spirits. I actually looked some of this stuff up to make sure that my uh, take on it, that my opinion had some validity. Um, I looked up the toxicity of the chemical uh, glyphosate, and what I read was that it's less toxic for humans than table salt. Too much of a good thing can be bad. Well, anyway. Um, I'm not worried about breathing the wonderful breeze that comes off of the lake all the time. But let's talk about the drinking water deal. Um, I got my list here of results. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to read you the things that I tested for that were zero all the way across the board. And the board is, these are the things I tested, the different sources of water. I tested lake water. I tested the uh, pool, my own pool, which is uh, regular water uh, treated with chlorine. I tested my kitchen sink. I tested my Garifon, the bottled water that we buy for 25 pesos for 19 liters, about five gallons. I tested the city water and that little filter that you saw a picture of earlier in the video. That's not a purification filter. That's just a sand filter that keeps me from having to clean out the screen in the back of my washing machine every other load. Um, and I tested my well. And then I also tested my neighbor's saltwater pool, 
and I tested her purified water. She has the three-stage uh, purifying filters, you know, smaller and smaller microns, and then uh, she has the UV light that's supposed to kill things like amoebas and bacteria and whatever. I've said this in videos before, but I really like saying it. Um, I don't have a purified water system. And the reason I don't is because, frankly, I don't believe in them. Um, if you filter water, it means that you hold all the contaminants in the filter. And then the next day, you run all the fresh water through the rest of the contaminants that you saved up from yesterday, plus you save up two days worth now. And in 30 days, you've got 30 days worth of contaminants. Well, if filters were 100% perfect, that'd be fine. But after about 30 days, you're getting all of the fresh water run through the contaminants from the last 30 days, and if filters are only 99.9% .9 pure uh, uh, efficient, pretty soon you're getting more contaminants, not less contaminants, by the math. Don't want to argue about that. Don't need any comments about it. <laughs> That's just my theory of filtration. The other one, and this is kind of tongue-in-cheek, but um, it's, I'm half serious about it. The UV lights don't kill amoebas or bacteria. They just simply change their chromosomes so that they can't reproduce. Well, if you mess with the chromosomes in an organism, doesn't that just mean that it can't reproduce what it was? Who the hell knows what it can reproduce and what you're going to have in your pipes? And if you get one amoeba past, um, amoeba past the light, how, is it, how long is it before you got two, four, 16, 256? Am I doing the geometric progression correctly? I think so. The point is that um, if the UV light ever goes off and you run the tap in your house, the water goes past the light and it's off so it doesn't do anything. And then you get amoebas in your pipes. Well, we live in Mexico. The electricity goes off regularly. Well, that might be an exaggeration, but it's not unusual, especially during the rainy season, that the breaker on the pole by the transformer trips because of a lightning strike somewhere in the neighborhood and you don't have electricity for half an hour. Well, if you happen to, you know, run your thing or flush your toilet or whatever during that half an hour, you got amoebas in the, in the, in the pipes in your house. And in about an hour, you got a lot of them because that's how that geometric progression of cell division works. I'm not a zoologist, or a botanist, or even a scientist, but um, that's my, as I said, only half serious take on why I don't have a uh, purification system in my house in Mexico. Well, here's the numbers for all the things that came up zero, nothing, nada. There are 16 of them. Um, in total, and a, a, a bunch of them came up with nothing. Hydrogen sulfide. Zero, 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 nada, nothing. None of the things I tested had hydrogen sulfide in the water sample. Iron, none, zero, all the way across the board. Copper, all zeros except for my kitchen sink. And I may have a copper pipe going in there, I don't know. I, I can't explain it, but I got 0.1, and the Environmental Protection Agency standard for drinking water in the United States is 1.3. So that's what uh, I, I'm. I'm. It ten times more would be okay to drink. Um, everything else was zero. Every other source. Um, manganese zero all the way across. Chlorine zero all the way across, except for my swimming pool, which is chlorinated. And the, the number for that was three, and the EPA standard for drinking water is four. Uh, nitrate and nit 
trite. Now this is what you would get if you had fertilizers running into the lake from the agricultural activities. Zeros. None in, none in anything. None in the lake, none in the well, none in the water, none. No fertilizer um, runoff in the lake that's measurable. It doesn't mean there's none. It just means this test couldn't measure it. Um, zinc, zero. Fluoride, of course there's no fluoride. Uh, fluoride is what they put in the water in the United States to keep your teeth from falling out of your head. Uh, sodium chloride, that's salt. None. Zero. With one exception. My neighbor's saltwater swimming pool. <laughs> and this thing goes from zero to 2,000. The number, the color of the thing was way off that way. It was like, it didn't even register. It was 2,000 plus, which we expected for a saltwater pool. But everything else was zero. Um, mercury. Now this is the one that's supposed to be killing children. Zeros all the way across. No mercury measurable in the water of Lake Chapala or any of the city water sources uh, or my well. Nothing. No mercury. Not a zip. And now for those things that didn't have uh, uh, zeros. Uh, first of all is the pH, the acidity or uh, base of the water. The Environmental Protection Agency standard is 6.5 to 8.5. My, my test for the lake was 8. The pool was 7. Uh, everything else was 7.5 except the bottled water was 6.5, a little bit lower. So everything within an acceptable range for drinking water according to the EPA. Uh, next is hardness. Uh, apparently we have hard water. The lake, uh, oh the standard is 10 to 100 and the lake was 250. The pool was 250. The um, city water was 100. The bottled water was lower, it was 50. And my well was 450 and that's kind of like way off of the range of expectations. So I got to thinking about that maybe a couple of years ago. We put, it's called call. It's what they make um, mescla, um, uh, uh, what do you call it, mortar. <laughs> Trouble with my English. That mortar it, it, uh, that you put bricks together with, that's what they make this call for. It, 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 and it was 450. Well, anyway, we put that in the well a couple of years ago uh, to help with the... Um, odor of the water in the well. That's what my gardener said you do and we did and it worked and it's great. It's the only reason I can come up with to think that the uh, well water was way up uh, in terms of hardness uh, from everything else. This is the one that we should probably pay great attention to and it's lead. The um, acceptable standard of parts per million of lead in your drinking water according to the EPA in the United States of America is 0.015 and the lake water had 0.05 which is three and a half times the acceptable level for drinking so don't drink the lake water. The pool is 0.03 which is twice the acceptable level the sink water was um, 0.015, which is exactly the standard. So with regard to the lead, drinking water in the sink is not a problem, according to the EPA. The uh, bottled water was 0.03, which is twice the level. I don't want to badmouth the water bottle company. And again, this test is subjective, but I did it twice 
And that's the numbers I got. Don't know what to tell you about that. Um, the well water was zero. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you about that either. I expect the lake, which is you know, five times what it ought to be, three and a half times what it ought to be, 0 0.05, and the well to be the, the same because the levels go up and down together. So, you know, I just feel, figure I'm getting lake water out of the well, but zero for lead. I can't explain that. Uh, sulfate. Now, sulfate um, is not a bad thing, apparently. It's acceptable to have 250 parts per million in your water by the EPA, but everything was zero. So I don't think that's bad, with one exception, or oh, two exceptions. The first exception was my neighbor's purified water out of her kitchen faucet. It was 200, which is still in the acceptable range. But my bottled water, my Garifon, was 400. And that's another one that I tested twice just to make sure that I didn't, you know, read the number wrong or something. I don't know why there's more sulfate than there ought to be in my bottled water. Or why there's more sulfate in purified water when... Everything else is just zero. Again, I can't explain that. Uh, and the last thing on the list is alkalinity. Um, nothing remarkable about that. Uh, everything was 120 except for bottled water, which was zero. And the lake was twice as much, 240. Um, the acceptable standard in the United States is 75 to 100. So everything except the lake was was acceptable. And the bottled water was below acceptable. I don't know if that's good or bad. I, I think it's a bad because they say it ought to be between 75 and 100. But I think those are maximums. Like, you know, it's if, if for lead it's 0 0.015, that must be the maximum. It must certainly be okay to have zero lead. Well, those are my numbers, and um, I'll take a picture of this right now, and there it is, if you want to pause the video and take a look at that. Well, I came to thank you for being my lovely assistant today, and I'm going to pay you. Are you ready to be paid? It, yes. And how would you like to be paid? In penguinos. I know, I'm way ahead of you. These are penguinos. They're like, you know, Mexico's version of... What? Hostess cupcakes? Yes. Yeah? Uh-huh. They got cream in the middle. Yeah. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.